What's cracking, movie trivia schmodown fans? It's your boy C Dub, and uh, I don't know about y'all, but I'm still reeling from those matches last week from the live event, the reveal of the not four but five horsemen. Man, this is gonna be quite the follow-up. We got a, a inner geekdom match for this tournament. Rachel the Crusher Cushing taking on Marquia McCarty. This is going to be a good f battle. Let's see how good McKe Marquia is and uh, if she lives up to the hype that she was blasting in the, uh, pat in, in the promos in the past. Let's get this thing started. Schmodown fans, it's Thad Williams, your commissioner. I'm here with a little bit of an update regarding the Inner Geekdom Tournament. As you all may have heard, the Inner Geekdom Tournament is happening right now. Some of the matches that have already aired are part of that tournament. There might be some confusion going on, so I wanted to clear it up. As you might know, the matches that have already aired in the Inner Geekdom division the last few weeks are part of this tournament. First of all, Adam Lavic versus Hector Navarro, that was a round one match. Adam is moving on to round two. Also, Emma Fife versus Jay Washington was a round one match. She will be heading into round two as well. Today's match, Rachel versus Marquia, is also part of round one. Upcoming matches in the next few weeks that you might have heard about, Mike Kalinowski, the beautiful Mike Kalinowski, is facing off against Jared Haben. Uh, we're pretty sure Mike's going to win that one because he's one of the best players in the league, and I'm a big fan. Also, we have Mark Donica versus Robert Meyer Burnett. That's a match you do not want to miss in round one. Coming up, a few matches that you might not have heard about yet. Not. Mike the Answer Man Carlson is facing off against the world's finest member, Eric Zipper. And also, Keaton Markey is cut facing off against Rosie Knight in her Schmodown debut. Rosie Knight, of course, from Jedi Council fame. And also, Koi Jandrew is facing off against the amazing Mara Kanopic, a newcomer in the Schmodown League. How does round two work, you might ask? I haven't been told, I haven't decided just yet. As soon as round two matches have been decided, I will let you know. But everyone from round one will be advancing to round two in the next few weeks. And I think after round two is done, we will have a normal round three. It shouldn't, so, sorry. Hello? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike, I'm doing it right now. No, it's going really well. I just told them all about round one and round two. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, and I'm just getting word. Round two will feature a match at the Collider Collision. There will be a match from round two featured in Collision 2. Woo! So stay tuned for that and enjoy today's match. Rachel Cushion versus Marquia coming up right now here at the Schmodown. And that's the crusher. No. Rachel okay. Cushing yeah. is just on fire. People love yeah. Rachel Cushing. She's, she's one of the most popular people we've ever seen in this league. She has done, she had a great run in the singles. You talk about having a run in the singles. She almost won the damn thing. Yeah. So I've made a really good run this year in teams. I just had a hell of a run in the singles tournament. I feel really proud about that. But I've told you guys from the beginning, this is where I belong. I want to take the pleasure of introducing you to the newest member of the Viper Squad. Ladies and gentlemen, please start clapping in your seats, by your computers, by your cell phones, even your bootleg flat screen TVs for marvelous Marquia McCarty. Rachel Cushing. Rachel Cushing. Also known as the Crusher. <laughs> You're challenging her right now. Rachel, prepare to be crushed. Five Club! Mark 
Sounds like an affirmative response. We have Marquia McCarty, and she yeah. is challenging something of a schmodown myth at this point. Rachel the Crusher Cushing going back to her roots in an inner geekdom match. How do you see this one shaping up? Well, I mean, obviously you go right to the Crusher because she's done so well, not only in the singles tournament, uh, the team tournament, but she is known for her inner geekdom. Um, McCarty right now is the is the question mark because this is her very first match. And the question mark uh, becomes something of an exclamation point if yeah. you think about the confidence that she has portrayed. She as has a, a lot of confidence, which I like. A member of the Viper Squad, and she has just been yapping nonstop, but she has some credibility to back her up. But as we know for, from this space, she loves these kind of movies. I think Inner Geekdom is perfectly suited to her particular skill set. When you look at a Rachel Cushing, you mentioned how close she's been to the mountain top in yep. both the teams and the singles just getting a whip of the belt in each time maybe right. coming back to the inner geekdom roots that she from which she sprung I think could <laughs> give her a better more balanced attack the next time she's in any kind of schmodown. That's a good point. I think that coming into the inner geekdom she's going to find her groove. It's going to it's going to be interesting to see how McCarty will face Cushing and these, you know, she's a tough one when it comes to inner geekdom. I mean, look, we know it's easy to talk trash. Heck, sure. I do it to you on your phone at 3 a.m. I don't mind it, actually. It's kind of fun. Well, now that I know that, I will never do it again. Oh, Kim McCarty, on the other hand, she's been doing a fair amount of trash talking to Rachel Cushing, but it gets to be a whole different ballgame. As you know better than anybody, once you're under the white hot spotlight of the movie trivia, Schmodown, the competitors had a lot to say to each other. We'll take a quick look right now. Today, I make my way back into the Inner Geekdom League. It has been far too long since I fought in this league, the league that I feel is my home league. And, you know, there were a bunch of newbies, and they all went after Inman, and Donica made a five for it. I mean, a little too easily, if you ask me. So, now I'm back. The veterans are back. We're going to have this little tournament here, and uh, I'm going to make my way to Inman and get that belt. We've come to the point once again where we're at this crossroads with the Viper Squad and the I Club. So now another member has to get squashed by a marvelous individual, one marvelous Marquia McCarty. And I believe she has a whole lot to say that I'm going to enjoy. And Internet, you better listen as well. I'll say this. Jay Washington has done a lot of groundwork to get the Viper Squad where it is. He's recruiting left and right. And he's got Marquia now, who just challenged me right out of the gate. Nobody knows what she can do in the ring. I certainly don't. But you can't, you know, stop at, at Jay's work that he's been doing with the Viper Squad. They have a little bit of a rivalry going with us in the Five Club. I'm happy to play into that. And I'm happy to take on anybody that challenges me in the inner geekdom, especially because that belt's going to be mine. Hi! Hi, Rachel. I'm actually a really big fan of yours. I enjoy all of the experience, all of the much, 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 much experience that you have with Schmodown. I intend to learn from you today. I really do. And I intend to school you in return. Recently, I've had a lot of focus on singles. And unfortunately, my run ended with a defeat to Sam Levine, who retained the belt. Uh, and then he went and retained it against my partner, Clark Wolf. And then the focus was on the team division and the Shire Wolves, which is awesome. I love playing with Clark. But I needed to find time to go back to the place I loved, that geeky place, the inner geekdom. It's my home. You know, I've been good all my life, Rachel, all my life. And until I talked to Mr. J. Washington and Miss Janine the Machine, I didn't realize I don't have to be good when I can be marvelous. And it's only two things you can do about it. Nothing and deal with it. Damn it. See you soon. I'm never insulted by somebody who challenges me. I appreciate the gall. I appreciate the balls it takes to do that because I'm good in the inner geekdom. So, Marquia, you know, I'm all set to play you, but uh, you might have bitten off more than you can do. Yeah. And you see that? I mean, look, Marquette yeah. not backing down from the no. challenge, but I think that's kind of how you have to approach this match, is you can't come at Rachel Cushing sheepishly. you got to bring everything you have the full day, and that includes in the pre-interview, Mark. That's right. You do the pre-interview, you set it up, you set the tone, and you're going to walk in there with some confidence. I like that angle. Yeah, and, and Rachel Cushing, I mean, look, I think that she's more looking at this as a test of her knowledge uh, versus uh, somebody who is an unknown sure. I think Rachel is looking at this as a test against herself yes. as much as 
Mar- Key Marquini. Did, did you pick up on that vibe as well? Uh, I did. I think I think Rachel knows her stuff, and I think she's just going to go in and be a professional. That's what she does. It's McCarty that I'm looking at. She's coming in hot. And if you look at the tail of the tape, we know that Marquia's strength includes comic book movies, knowing her snakes, and lollipops. I'm not lollipops. sure how that's going to factor in here today, I'm but she can to find out. tell yeah. the difference between a viper and anaconda and a cobra. And then Rachel Cushing, I mean, the tail of the tape, she has a lot of strengths. Just a few to throw around there would be Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and the Hobbit movies. I didn't yeah. know that could be considered a strength. Apparently it is for Rachel Cushing. Well, the Hobbit, that's a movie, all right. And you know what I actually liked? If I gave them a... You know what? I take back some of the things I said about you, Hobbit. I'm sorry I fell asleep during the Battle of the Five Armies seven times. <laughs> All right. It happens to the best of us, Mr. Ellis. <laughs> Mark Riley, hang on. I'm getting a text. Okay. And it's uh, it's actually from my mom, and it says that she is ready to schmow down. Oh, Are good. you ready to schmow down? I am ready to schmow down. Then let's get ready to schmow down! <laughs> Introductions in this three-round inner geekdom match. We have the one, the only, Mr. Christian Harloff. Take it away, Golden Throat. Introducing first, representing the Viper Squad. Harley Quinn vibe is Jay Washington, the Jared Leto. Uh, sure, I'll go with that today. Yeah. And Marquia having some fun, Jay Washington escorting her out as she is a member of his Viper squad. Right. And their opponent, Christian. Representing the Fight Club, she is the 2017 Rookie of the Year. With a record of 1-2 and two in the Inner Geek Group Division, Rachel the Crusher! kind of intros there, Mark yeah. Riley. As somebody who owns a Superman leather jacket, you mm. must be pretty impressed with what you just saw. Very impressed. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect anything least with the inner geekdom, of course. So. All right, well, we have the managers. <laughs> Do the managers have anything to say yeah, before yeah. they uh, look very stoic over there? Jay Washington. Oh, boy. Peggy Carter's dead. Oh. 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 death, just like Rachel is about to have. Wow, wow. And that's going to be canon. Okay, okay. Uh. And uh, I would just like to add that, uh, you know, Peggy Carter adds some much needed class to wow. the situation. Wow. So too does Rachel Cushing. There it is. Getting hot in here. Already. The competitors, uh, uh, competitors ready to go. Rachel, you are the favorite. Are you ready to compete? I am. Okay, Marquia, how you feeling? Oh, I'm okay. All right, then without further ado, I will get to the rules of round one. This is an inner geekdom, so the competitors are going to hear ten questions from ten different corners of geekdom. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as the competitors hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you to give us your answer, please verbalize your best attempt at an answer into the microphone. At the same time, show what you wrote on the whiteboard to your preferred camera. I will remind you, you each have three usages of the JTE rule. If you didn't hear a question, you need to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. If you want to challenge a ruling or an answer to a question, please use your one challenge at any time during the match. Mark Riley, (laughs) good to go? I'm good to go, my friend. It's time for Movie Trivia (laughs) Schmodown! This question will be administered by one of the members of the Mount Rushmore of the movie Trivia Schmodown. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank yeah, you. I was talking about me, but go ahead. Of you course. Uh, round one. Here we are. Your first question in the category of Star Trek. Star Trek. Uh, 
Name one of the original crew members besides Kirk that cameos in Star Trek Generations. You know that movie, right? Uh, I remember the it's movie canon. being released. I remember I was still deep in my um, Star Wars is better than Star Trek, thus I cannot like them both. Five, four, Bones three, I'm out of that now. Two, I'm, I forgot one. one. Yeah, I would. All right, and pencils down. Let's go to Rachel Cushing. Chekhov? That is, that is one of the best. Oh, I'm Martina sorry, I did McCarty. actor. Um, Nichelle? Uh, it is, it is not looking to show. We're looking for either Scotty or Chekhov. Uh, yes, Scotty, so, Scotty or Still love Loki, though. Chekhov. But we do love us some yeah. Loki. So, Cushing takes an early 1-0 lead. Your next question comes from the world of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fans here today. Your question is, which hobbit? What is the name of the hobbit that awakens Treebeard from his slumber in the Two Towers? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing the Two Towers in it's theaters. It's a good movie. Um, and liking it more than Return of the King. No, I'll have to read this. Take. That's a hot take. Five, four, three, excuse me, two, one. Hands down, Marquia. I believe it's Mary. It is not oh, Mary. Man, Does Rachel have it? It's Pippin. It is. <laughs> Showing her one stuff. Of the two. It's it's one of the two. Definitely one of one the two. One of the two hobbits. Our next question one. All right. Your third question comes from the category of the MCU. The MCU. In Guardians of the Galaxy, who helps Star Lord break out of prison with a fellow prisoner's metal leg? I mean, we've all been in that situation. Yeah, that right. was a tough weekend. Do you mean I can choose from anybody? I'm sorry. Clarification. Uh, would you like to use your JTE rule? Uh, repeat the question. It's, um, yeah, I mean, we, we can provide some clarity. It's just in, yeah, I mean, it's, we need the name of the character. I'm sorry, then repeat. Okay. In Guardians of the Galaxy, who helps Star-Lord break out of prison with a fellow prisoner's metal leg? The Guardians, uh... They're from all over the place. They're, they're you know, Groot. like just a bunch. Yeah, one's kind of from Earth, I guess. Yeah, yeah. he is. Five, four, three, <laughs> seven, <laughs> Monaco, two, one. Pens down, Rachel Cushing first. Rocket? It is Rocket. a text by oh, Rocket. 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 is on the board. Marquia, maybe not that confident in her own answer, but it was, in fact, correct, and it is now 3-1. to one. Rachel Cushing has yet to miss. Our next question comes from the world of Harry Potter movies. What is the name of the three-headed dog in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? Mm. Oh, and, um, had a dog. Yeah, I believe every crew member that had a hat just threw it on the ground. Yeah, they sure the did. They uh, apparently know that. Question. For reasons unknown. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Marquia first. Uh, it's like uh, this is spelled wrong. Oh. It but is it's not. It is not Cerebras. That is not. Does Rachel Cushing have it? Fluffy. It is yeah. Fluffy. Oh. Yes, it is Fluffy. Four, one with Rachel uh. taking a pretty big lead at the first round here. We go on to the fifth question, ladies. In the category of DC. DC. And your question is, who directed Superman Returns? This is a movie where Superman returned. He did return. You're a big Superman guy. Uh, I like Superman. What is it about the character? Uh, great hair. Succinct answer? Yeah. And I feel satisfied. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We go to Rachel Cushing first. Brian Singer. Brian That's Singer correct. is correct. Marquis, did you Zach have Snyder. it? It is oh, not Zack Snyder, not, Zach not Snyder. yet. And it is now 5 to 1. Five Rachel to Cushing one. in a commanding lead over Marquis. Rachel, in fact, has not missed yet no. in round 1. If she does throw a perfect game, she will get a bonus question asked just to her. We're not there yet. We're merely at question number 6. And that comes from the world of The Hobbit. And the question is, name the actor who plays the Elven King Thranduil. In the Hobbit films. Thrandall is a great name. It is. And um, well, class Thrandall. Thrandall. That's going to be my new middle name after today. Mark Thrandall. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Marquia, did you have it? Still love Loki. 
Uh, she, she still she's love Anna Loki? <laughs> no correct answer to Rachel Cushing. To stay perfect. I love Lee Pace. She does yeah. stay perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Lee Pace is the correct answer. Six Rachel. to one. It's going away with this. this Taking is it. Why in. they call her the crusher. That's right. And your seventh question now, ladies, comes in the category of the DC EU. That shared universe thing. There's a lot of letters. And your question is, what is the first and last name of Chris Pine's character in Wonder Woman? I, uh, is it, is, is it your phone that, that does the Wonder Woman Steve thing? Trump. No, no, that's Wendy. Yeah. I thought that was you. No, no, no. Why okay. would, mine plays the Superman theme. What's wrong with you? I, sorry I slighted you. I apologize. Yeah. Five, four, Repeat three. the question, please. Oh, I've got to repeat the question. So what's A.T. Roper? And what is the first and last name of Chris Pine's character in Wonder Woman? It is Wendy's phone. Oh, no, it about is. It. I it hear is. it go off a lot. Yeah. It's, it's better than the ding. It is better than ding. the ding. Five, Five four, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Rachel Cushing. Needed to dig. Steve Trevor. It is Steve Trevor. Yeah, Trevor Mark yeah, it's Steve Trevor, and then here's Wonder Woman going, no! Oh, yeah. isn't, it? <laughs> isn't it? Oh, and you made the audience. Oh, boy. Just, yeah, uh, yeah we know, yeah. Hey, you know what? You can kill off the Steve Trevor, just don't kill the dog. It is 7-2, to two, <laughs> and uh, Marquis, a much-needed point there, but Rachel yeah, continues that. her run with a flawless first round. I will ask the question now. Yeah, that's your a dramatic pause that was, for effect. We needed that pause. And our next question comes from the world of Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars in this hey. category. What is the name of the rebel pilot that survived both the Death Star battles and the Battle of Hoth besides Luke Skywalker? Mm. Very good question. Because obviously Luke is still alive and well in the Star Wars universe. He this is. is something we all know. We do know that. Yeah, guy's doing great. I'll see you around, kids. Sitting on that rock. Mm. Five, four, three, two, and a one. Pencils on hey. down. We go to Marquia. Han Solo? It's not Han Solo. No. He did participate in some battles, not those three. Rachel Cushing. Wedge Antilles. It Wedge is Antilles. Wedge Antilles. Uh, the Crusher is crushing right now. This is uh, this is happening. That's right. This is uh, this is Rachel Cushing. What she does two this questions she away does. from throwing a perfect round and a round in which Marquia desperately needs yeah. at least one of these next two points. All right. So we're going to your ninth question. That comes in the category of Marvel. Marvel. In 2004's Spider-Man 2, what is the profession of John Jameson, son to J. Jonah Jameson? A lot of J's in the Jameson family. Yeah, that's a whole lot of J's. You know, they are worth 10 meaty points in Scrabble. Oh, oh yeah. J okay. Yeah, you get a J. Okay. okay. It is Jump. good news. Okay. Unless it's your last turn. Then oh. it's like you contracted something. Five, four, three. Repeat. You gotta repeat. In 2004's Spider-Man 2, what is the profession of John Jameson, son to J. Jonah Jameson? An X is a good one. X a is Q is tough because you got to rely a whole lot on you, although QA is a word that you can use in words with friends. Z? Z is another 10 pointer. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. We go to Rachel Cushing. I believe he's an astronaut? He is an astronaut. That's yeah. correct. He's an astronaut. Yeah. Now. A reporter that didn't have, that didn't have it. All right. Actually, I, I think right. most of us would have guessed reporter over yeah. that, given the lineage. Yeah, you know, no. he did follow in the family business. Instead, he went to space, I guess. There you go. And our last question comes from the world of mixed bag. Ooh, Close your eyes, reach your bad. hand deep in that bag. Could be anything. And the question come on, that has come out is How many Harry Potter movies did John Williams score? Ooh, that is a mixed bag question, and I like it. I would not know because while he was scoring those movies, I was working on my stand-up. That's good, though. That's I mean, it's, it paid off for you, I would say. Oh, I was watching the movies. I ended up going to John Williams. Oh, yeah. Five, four, three, three two, one. Marquia, did you have it? Three. It is, in fact, yes. three. Yeah, three. Three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a perfect, that's a perfect round. Uh, oh, so. Rachel Cushing has won a perfect round. Marquia showing 
sparks of life there towards the end, but Rachel yeah. Cushing, a dominant first round, so wow. dominant, in fact, that she has achieved a perfect round one, so she now gets asked a bonus question. This is just to Rachel, and it's worth the point, Mark Riley, you have the honor. All right, your Come bonus on, question, Rachel. Rachel. Who plays Ramona Flowers in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? Mary Elizabeth Winstead. She nails it. Okay. I mean, this is incredible. That what a showing. It is amazing. That is why she is one of the best in the game. Marquia has a lot to climb yeah. in round two, but she can do it because I will remind everybody out there as well as our competitors on the table that the inner geekdom works like this in round two. Five questions. Five questions get asked in round two. They are each worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer competitors, you can check the multiple choice, at which point the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind there is stealing available in round two. If your opponent misses their question, you do have the four to be able to steal it if you know the correct answer. You get your questions from that there wheel of fate. Each competitor gets a spin at it. If you're not sure of the category that you spun, you don't feel too confident in it, you can spin again, at which point you must answer the five questions. Uh, uh, Rachel Cushing, Miss Carter, you are leading uh, by a healthy amount, 11 to 3. Would you prefer to spin first, or do you want to defer to Marvelous Marquia? As always, I'm going first. She's going to go first. She's going to go first. She's going to go first. She is not shy. Boy. Miss Carter has lived a life, some would say. Yes. Uh, born, I believe, in the late 1920s. Something like that, yeah. Uh, around in the 40s, probably during World War II. She made a name for herself That's in the right. 40s, I would uh, say. One of the sassiest gals at the funeral home. Uh, That's, That's very true. Passed away in 2010. Yeah. All right, round and round it goes, and it's uh -oh. going to land on the finish. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Star, Star Trek. 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 Movies. How do you feel, Miss Carter? I'm just going to call her Miss Carter for the rest of this round. She's thinking about it. Do you want the Star Trek, or do you think maybe something else is out there for you? Oh, well, she is going to keep it. Yeah. If this woman knows Star Trek, I mean, it's over. I don't this understand. Is it. what the greats do. They might take something that's not in their uh, Tales of the Tape no. show, but they go with something that indeed they're confident in, and that seems no, to be the case for Star Trek movies. You like Star Trek, too. We are in Star Trek, and your first question, Rachel. Who plays the Klingon General Chang in Star Trek The Undiscovered Country? Christopher Plummer. That is two points correct. Oh, All right. Yeah. Wow. Christopher Plummer playing General Chang. Two points, and it is 13 to 3. Ten point lead. All right. We go to your next question, Rachel. In 2009's Star Trek, who is captain of the Enterprise when it first sets off Christopher into Pike. space? Christopher Pike. Christopher Pike? Christopher Pike is correct. We, we only wanted the last name. Yeah, yeah. She, I feel like we should take two points away because she gave us too much information. We so. can't handle that here. We should probably yeah. falter. 15 All right. to 3. 15 to 3, a commanding lead. And we go to your next question, your third question, Rachel. In Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock, Krug orders his gunner to target a specific area of the Federation starship orbiting the Genesis planet. What area was targeted? That's a deep cut right there, man. That's, a lot, that's a lot some of verbiage for you. Yeah, it was. Have a sip of sharpening. Multiple choice. Multiple choice it is. Is it A, the shield generator? B, the engine? C, the bridge? D, the weapons array? D? The weapons array? We're going to count down from five, four. A. A is incorrect. Mark here for the steel. say engines? It is, in fact, the engine. That's a steel. That's a much needed steel. Oh, that's that's steel. Yeah, she needed that steel. Uh, I think any time you can prevent an opponent with a big lead of getting points, that's an achievement in amongst itself. The fact that she was able to gain a point, too. At this exactly. point, Marquis is really playing to survive into round three that's and not correct. get that knockout. All right, Rachel, we are going to your next question. What is the name of the villainous alien species in Star Trek Insurrection? Multiple choice. Multiple choice. Oh, good God, look at this. <laughs> Pronounce those correctly. You want me to take a stab at it? it? No, I, I want to do right. this. Is it A, the Baku, B, the Borg, 
C, the Vulcans. D, the Sunna. A. Or Sunna. A. <laughs> it's very Trebekian of you. Thank you. A. A, the Baku is incorrect. Sunna. That is correct. It is the Sunna. Oh, oh, steel. Marquia, she just gets up in the level it and just and just chiseling some commandments there in there, saying, she "I will not go it. quietly into the night." All right, Rachel, for your last question in the category of Star Trek, what is the name of the frozen Klingon prison planet from Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country? Ruapente. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yeah, it's two points. I, uh, I, I've never heard of Ruapente. It doesn't sound like there's a Sandals Resort on that planet. No, I will not be no. visiting it. Sounds awful. It sounds kind of like a hub in Star Trek. It does. Nevertheless, Marquia, having some level of success in that round for no other reason because she was able to steal a couple points from Rachel. But, but Marquia, if she gets a good spin here, she'll be right back in this ballgame. Without further ado, Marvelous Marquia, please give us your best spin at that wheel. I've never seen the reverse spin before. It is, if I have, it has been a day and a year. Oh, here we go. Could be Star Wars. Yeah, Star, Star Wars. Wars. It landed on it landed Star, Star Wars. Wars. I know you would sit down with that. I would, I would sit down on that immediately. Yes. Where is Marquia's head at? She's considering. She's thinking. She's gonna. She's gonna spin she's again. again. Will she do okay. the reverse Australian toilet again? Looks that way, Ellis. Yeah. She did, she did it again. Did it again. <laughs> totally different down there on the land down under. All right, and here comes. It could be comes, stores again. It could be DC, DC movies. movies. DC movies, it is. That looks like a good productive. Yeah, I think she wants that from Marquia. This is DC movies, and the interesting thing about this category is that this is DC movies, so this could be from any DC movie, it, primarily it ones that are not currently going in the DCEU. That's correct. Could be Superman for the quest for peace. That's right. How and bad would that be? <laughs> that it. would be mean. Yeah. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be from Superman 3. All That's right. True. <laughs> Marquia, your first question of five in the world of DC movies. In 1989's Batman, how many millions of dollars does the Joker say he'll dump on the streets of Gotham? A hundred million. Or ten million. No, it's a hundred million. Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. We can do that. Is it A, one million dollars, B, twenty million dollars, C, fifty million dollars, or D, a hundred million dollars? 20 million. Five, four. Two million. Uh, that is not an option, unfortunately. Two oh, million dollars. It is. It, it, it was answered as two million, so I have to. That makes sense. Rachel Cushing. It's twenty million. It is twenty, 20 million, million dollars. So oh, point oh, for Rachel for Marquia there. Yep. Eighteen to five in the uh, favor of Rachel Cushing. Marquia, your next question. In the theatrical cut of Superman two. Lois is in what city? Paris, France. At the start of the film. Paris, France. Paris, France. <laughs> Five, four, three. Metropolis? That is incorrect. <laughs> correct. Paris. Oh, Paris ah. is correct. That was a big two-point steal. It's a big two-point steal because we are in danger of yeah, knockout this is territory close. here. Here's how it works. Is that in the final round, in round three, the, the most amount of points one can accumulate is ten points. Hmm. And so using that math, Marquia is going to have to get this next question right or else this will be a knockout. Yes. Marquis, your next question, and we need some points from this one or it will be a knockout. In The Dark Knight Rises, what is the false name that Marion Cotillard's character goes by? Miranda Tate. Multiple choice. Is it A, Pamela Isley, B, Miranda Tate, C, Nora Freeze, or D, Jane Doe? Miranda Tate. Can I the question? In The Dark Knight Rises... What is the false name that Marion Cotillard's character goes by? Miranda Tate. I think I have one more repeat for the answers. Uh, you I do have one more JT rule. Would you like to use it now? Uh, for the answers. Um, well, you don't need to use it for the repeat of the answers. We can give those multiple choice options. Is it A, B, Miranda Tate, C, Nora Freeze, or D, Jane Doe? Uh, 
Uh, I'll go with C. And your winner! Rachel the Crusher Cushing proving her middle name in the yeah. guise of Peggy Carter here today. A dominating performance, one of the best we've ever seen in the Inner Geekdom. That it was one of the most impressive uh, performances I've seen in an Inner Geekdom match or otherwise. That was a perfect first round. A couple of steals, killing it on her. I mean, th th Rachel is tough to beat. It was an announcement of somebody returning to their form here with yeah. Rachel Cushing. And for Markeel, she showed a lot of moxie. She showed the ability in a number of different categories. It's yeah. just for that all to come together under the White Hot Spotlight. Looking at an opponent that is getting every question they see, it's just, it, it's too much for any mortal to handle. It's too much for any mortal. It's a first match under the lights and against Rachel, no less. That was a tough match but we'll see how she bounces back. Maybe she'll come back and see if uh, maybe another competitor, and we'll see what happens. I think that there are some silver linings in this touch of gray for the Viper Squad and Marvelous Marquia and Rachel the Crusher Cushing, a thoroughly dominating performance for the post-game interviews with both the winner and the loser. We now toss it over to the will and the only miss, Jen Sturger. Movie TV Shmodown fans, Jen Sturger here, and I am here with McCarty Marquia. That was that was a tough first match for anyone in this league to handle, and I think that you handled it with such class. And I just want to know, you know, what were you thinking going into that, into that second round? Like, it, I could just see you really kind of focusing in. Yeah, I was focusing in. I wish I had gotten Star Trek. That would have been nice. But otherwise than that, I really wish that Emma Fife hadn't been whispering her hexy sayings in my ear before the match. You know, I think that probably had something to do with it. Yeah, Emma had all this stuff that she was saying to me. Yeah, yeah, that wizard and stuff. All the time, like the her wizardy... The wizard and stuff, yeah. Star Wars stuff. Nobody, we, stuff. I don't think she's... No, that was no, happening. No, we need to have... We need to have this investigated by the league right now. How you Emma know, I thought Emma was being nice. She is hexing Emma Marquia, was being nice sending to telepathic me like messages that, but, to Rachel over there. This is just wrong. This is a travesty. Who, she does never know... Why Ray do I like porgs now? True. I never liked porgs before. Do you see before. what is happening to her? You listen... Rachel has never liked Star Trek. How does all of a sudden she know all these Star Trek games, huh? And this, I know Star Trek. She knows Star Trek. This ain't, that was my thing. This is not the will of Jesus, okay? I understand what you're doing now. I understand what everything, all of you and Rachel and all of you are doing now. Just, and I won't stand for it. This isn't the end. No. This See, is what not it is, the end. is the Fife Club and the League are conspiring to make the Viper Squad look bad, okay? You got Emma with these hexen potions and all these things, this twiddle doddle hoggles, cardboard swaddle, all that. That's what's happening, okay? And they want to make sure that I'm feeling broken, that Marquis is broken, that Janine is broken, that Stacy's broken, and it doesn't go that way. You know what? You had a new hope. You just wakened a new hate. Marquia, do you think with you being younger than Rachel, like some of the questions maybe just were a little bit out of your wheelhouse, especially when you landed on DC, which you said, if it had been Marvel, maybe things would have been different. If it had been MCU, if Emma Five hadn't done her wondrous, witchery, Star Wars stuff, I think it would have landed on MCU. But you know what? You know what? I did learn a really good lesson today. I did. What is it? What's the lesson? The lesson that I learned is that I'm going to learn what all of these elders have. All of your knowledge, I'm going to learn it. And the next time that I do this match, it won't just be my stuff that I know. I'll know all of theirs. Also... The late great prophetess Aaliyah said, age ain't nothing but a number, and a noun ain't nothing but a thing, okay? So don't you put ages in this, okay? This is all hexes, and demons, and witches, and warlocks, and crushed up porgs. This is all mystical magic we do not deserve. I want an investigation put in right now on this league. I will fill my brain with your elder knowledge. Come on, let's go. 
All right, so Riley, you, you see here, I mean, look, uh, Rachel Cushing, classy as always, always, but she is looking ahead. She, yeah. Her foot is on the gas, the steering wheel, she has her hands at the 10 and 2 position, and she is hell bent on getting somehow to Jason Inman's belt. That's right, she wants it, and uh, with that performance, I, if I were Jason Inman, I'd be looking over my shoulder right now because that's a tough, That's if you look at this match, and on paper, He's got to study some video just like Tom Brady does every night. <laughs> Jason Inman, if you're watching, eat a lot of avocados, drink a lot of water, just like Mr. Brady up there in New England. And for Marquia, she wants to still compete. I think yeah. she has the ability to be a force in the inner geekdom. It's just you go up against Mount Everest here. It's a, it's a tough way to introduce yourself to the inner geekdom. It is, but the thing I know about the Schmodown is the more you play, the better you get, the more you get kind of used to the lights. You get used to the questions. You get used to the audience. And I I think if she tries to come back, you know, that'll only be to her advantage. Absolutely, and I think with a coach like Jay Washington, as much as he likes to bark, I think that he is a good manager he of is. his squad, and you look at Rachel Cushing, it's a, it's a matter of the tortoise in the hair with Marquia. Slow and steady's going to win the race. You sure. get your reps, you get a little bit better every time. Uh, Rachel Cushing is both the best parts of both animals. She's That's the hair, right. she gets out to a lead, and she does not relent. Congratulations to Rachel the Crusher Cushing on a thorough defeat of marvelous Marquia McCarty here today in the inner geekdom. Thank you guys for watching this match. Make sure you subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out the Schmodown Rundown on iTunes and the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page. Mark Yody Riley, where can all the kids find you? Well, you can find me at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. See you there. All right, I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis at Mark Ellis Live. We will catch you all soon on a new edition of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Join our Patreon. Mom to the bomb to bang to bang diggy diggy. That's right. Dude, it is so good to have you back. Oh, it feels good. Feels the horse. Feels the horse. Yeah! I couldn't believe you took my call, and I couldn't believe you were ready to come back and do what you do best. You know, we've had our battles, Yodi, but I respect you like crazy. I couldn't believe you said yes, and I'm so happy to have you in the horse, with my man. Welcome back to the Schmodown, son. Damn, it feels good to be back. You know, you're doing the, you're, you're fighting the good fight out there. Yeah. Okay, and I'm watching these newbies come in, and they think they own the place. Of course. Uh, Nobody's won the belt like we have. Nobody's won the belt like we have. Now we have some cleaning up to do because I got to get rid of these guys. I'm sitting in the audience. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing these. I'm naming these questions off like it's nothing. Like I'm asleep. I want in there. Yeah, and I, I love that to do it. I love oh, that man. We built this thing. We built There's it along oh. with this guy. What the hell? Yeah. There it is. Riley. Pleasure. Roka. Great to, to be back. You. you know what? The last time the three of us were together, we were opponents. Yeah. yeah. Now we're allies. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I love being too. back. Dude, I couldn't, I, you know, with Ryan, I was just telling him, I couldn't believe you took the call. I'm even more surprised that you took the call. No, I told him, I said, we need a fifth member. And he said, who are you going to call? I said, i got to call the greatest of all time. i got to call Dan Merle. Dan, why did you take the call? Why are you back? Number one, I love the four of you guys. Yeah. Number two, it doesn't have a little, uh, you know, extra motivation. It yeah, doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Speaking of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the collision. Motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you feeling about the collision mm -hmm. and uh, Andrew Guy? Uh, you think he has a chance at all? or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, good. that's a good laugh. Oh, right. How sweet it is, baby. Feels good. What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown Breakdown. And the winner! Moving forward in the Inner Geekdom Tournament, Rachel Cushing finally makes her season debut against Marquia McCarty, who is making her overall Schmodown debut. Rachel got back to her old ways pretty quickly as she went 10 for 10 and hit the bonus question as well, and she led 11 to 3 after the first round. In the second round, Rachel spun and stuck with Star Trek. She would get three of her five questions correct for six points. However, she did give up two steals to Marquia. With Rachel up by 15, Marquia was unable to make a comeback and was KO'd after her third question in the second round. The final score was 20 to 5. Inside the numbers, Marquia in her debut went 5 of 15, but did go 2 for 2 on steals. And looking at Rachel's day, she went 16 of 18 for 89% correct. That is the second best winning accuracy rate all time in the inner geekdom. 
That first spot is held by the Inner Geekdom Champion himself, Jason Inman, when he answered 90% correct in his match against Mark Donica. If you want to find out all the stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter, and don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and the Collider Factory podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon... Well, it wasn't a great match, but uh, Rachel Cushing certainly crushed Marquia McCarty. Uh, you know, Marquia, um, you were talking a big game, how you were going to crush the crusher, and um, uh, very tough debut for you, I got to say. Uh, you know, you're an awesome person, uh, but... Um, if you want to take on the top town in the league and then geek them, you got to come stronger than that. Because that was uh, abysmal. I'm sorry, but it was. But Rachel, you know, Rachel did her thing. Five Club for Life, baby. Shire Wolves. Yeah, I'm happy with that she got the victory. If you like my reactions, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Christopher Woodburn. You can find me on Twitter, Chris Woodburn, Chris Woodburn 83, Facebook, Christopher Michael Woodburn. And if you do Schmodown reactions, trailer reactions, come join the MTS Fan Reaction League on Facebook. It's a lot of fun. So until next time, Mr. Boy C Dub. Peace. <laughs>